I started doing these shows at my grandmother's house in La Jolla when I was so uh, oh, 17. All my buddies would come after this. I got a camera when I was 16 in 1966. Started shooting the surf around La Jolla, which I was lucky. It was fabulous surf in La Jolla. Uh, and I'd have slideshows and they'd all come. And my, I was staying at my grandmother's house. I had this beautiful Frank Lloyd Wright type of house in La Jolla. And, but she was uh, deaf. But her sense of smell was like a, like midnight the lab, you know? <laughs> and uh, she was decrepit, and so I had the whole downstairs, and I'd, we'd have these big gatherings uh, of all my friends, and they'd set up like a, believe it or not, a hookah pipe once, and they'd I'd be smoking, and in the middle of the show, my grandmother bangs her cane on the stairway, and and all my buddy, like thirty surfers, macho surfers, stop like this. And she goes, Jeff, is somebody smoking down there? And, and I go, no, Grandma, yeah, somebody. And, and four or five of my friends just fled the house and got in their cars and drove away. This is in a day where people were more paranoid and all that. But anyway, so I started my grandmother's house slideshows. Um, this is, uh, I'm going to, the beginning of the show, I'm going to get into showing you how I did what I do. These were the elements that I used early on in the 70s, and this was a Hodgman, Hodgman raft that was used to be rented to all the tourists throughout the United States. These are the fins I used to go out in the big waves and all that. They're, they're like uh, duck feet uh, UDT fins. So these are my tools. That's me on the right. With, uh, this is probably about 74. <coughs> with my friends in Al Moana and Waikiki. Uh, and so that's the raft I used and the fins and the water housing and a few more pounds on the frame now. But this is where I used to love to shoot. This is an, on Oahu on the North Shore. This is Sunset Beach. And there's a, you go out through that shore break on the left and you have to time it. And there's a big riptide. And you can see in the lower left, the riptide carries you out to the left where I would, I would uh, start paddling out in the lower left of this photo. And then you go out to the middle where there's a peak wave you can see, and that's where I negotiate and station myself to shoot. This is uh, the same place at Sunset Beach, and this is the inside bowl, which you'd wait and wait. I'd be going back and forth on my raft and waiting for these big waves to hit the inside. Every now and then I get caught inside. It's kind of terrifying, I must say. Um, but generally, you don't get hurt. You get embarrassed, and uh, you uh, kind of lick your wounds. But you get tumbled. And if the raft would go into the shore, but it would kind of come drifting yeah. out. That's another example of kind of being on the raft and getting out of the way of the surfers. <laughs> These are some of uh, the, the kind of the peak moment uh, surf shots that I would get on my raft out at Sunset Beach. This is Simon Anderson on a, a thruster at Sunset Beach. A lot of these were used in the mag in Surfer magazines. This is uh, Davy Miller. He's from Ventura. Uh, this is what can happen when you're. Um, you don't know, station, you know, tighten your wing nuts, uh, come loose, and then that O-ring leaks, and then you're screwed to bust your $2,000 cameras. I don't know why he's laughing, he's smiling. <laughs> so these are other things I look for when I'm out shooting, is when a surfer, for, this is like looking into the shore behind the wave, and these really interesting moments happen looking back towards shoreline. It's very hard to um, predict. You, you kind of have to be a surfer to be, able, to be able to predict those type of moves. This is, uh, I really like this shot. This is looking back to our shore at Makaha on Oahu uh, when tandem surfing was on ABC Wild, Wide World of Sports. And it was really cool to watch kind of ballet on a way. Really this is another example of high action, and you have to, that, that happens in a split second. So you have to really, uh, it's kind of hard to get. This is an example of a camera mounted on a pole and I swim it around on a um, dry reef. And that's uh, one of the 
Malay Brothers. This is in Indonesia. This is another example of the camera mounted on the pole. This is in San Clemente. Kind of gives a really neat wide angle effect. This is the same spot, uh, San Clemente. And the, the far right up on that point is the Western White House, former Western White House of Richard Tricky Dick Nixon. This is the same area. Uh, it's Herbie Fletcher. Kind of the, the pole angle with the camera mounted on a pole kind of has a real mini drone helicopter. <coughs> These are my buddies, the same, those same guys just hanging out and talking. Part of uh, surfing is social, and part of it really is a wilderness experience. These are other things that I look for is waveforms. And uh, it's always changing with the light, time of day. Um, and you can get some really neat shots if you kind of look for that, use different lenses. This is in Timor, with uh, Dawn and Timor up in Iowa. This is Black's Beach in La Jolla, looking straight down. This is a kind of a, this is a telephoto shot, a pipeline. I really love the texture, uh, which is kind of you, you kind of shoot these, and, you, and then when you get them back, you realize how pretty all the texture and the wind blowing. This is in uh, Cote de Bosque and uh, Biarritz. I was staying at a friend's house, and the weather changed really quick when we ran down there, and it was really billowy in the light. This is uh, once again behind, kind of behind the wave in Tahiti. Neat waveform. This is uh, another uh, kind of mini telephoto waveform in Tahiti. This is off of uh, an island in, in the upper Baja called Todos Santos. And uh, that's a huge wave. That's a, probably an 18, 20 foot wave. Like, the face is probably 20 foot. And it was after a rain and the, the offshore winds and the wave hit the reef just right. Mm -hmm. This is a, a, another waveform where you, do, you go underwater and look at the wave underwater as it passes by. You wear a face mask. It's really cool to do that. Here's another example of that. These were actually taken in Tonga in all places. This is Hollister Ranch. Uh, out on a boat looking back in uh, at dawn. So then, you know, you start with the wave and then you have surfers in the environment. And as I was saying, surfing is like a wilderness experience, but you can see your house or your car or something. And that's what's so cool about it is that even here, you can go 50 yards off the beach and you have a wilderness experience. This is to every surfer, before you paddle out, it can be small waves, and these are obviously big waves, but you always kind of stand there and you analyze, well, what's going on, where can I paddle out, even when it's small. And so you you have all different forms of terror, or these guys are all, they're young and they know what they're doing, but they're still going, well, it's <laughs> right in front of them is a riptide in that whitewater area that runs parallel to the beach and it's like a river. So as soon as they jump in, they're getting carried sideways. This is a very benign, beautiful Santa Ana day. And this is at Hollister Ranch in Santa Barbara. It shows surfers just kind of hanging out. This is Marine Street in La Jolla. And in the lower left is sand, so you can see how close that is to the beach. It's not a big south swell. This, these are huge waves at Waimea Bay on Oahu, and uh, kind of rare. You know, every every month or so it gets that big. But that is really, really big. And tourists and people come to watch, and sometimes they get swept off those rocks. It's pretty dangerous. That day, the lifeguards came up and told those guys to get off the rocks. This is an example of, of surf in Hawaii where it's so windy, you can't go out. It's too windy, so these guys are just hanging out. This is kind of you know, surfers in the wilderness kind of thing, even though there's about 200 people on either side of that boat. This is. This is kind of the classic surfer's dream, a perfect day in a tropical environment with minimal people out. Uh, this was shot in the 70s at Pipeline on the water. This is a kind of 
an example of telephoto shortening. This is in Hawaii. And that's another example of the wilderness aspect. You see these phenomenal weather, fog, bright sun. This is the same area on the North Shore of Oahu. That, that's looking down the coast. They call it the Six Mile Miracle. It has the most varied surf in the world. It's amazing. Has trade winds offshore, which makes it good for surfing. This is a photo I just like of the surfers, uh, their body language. This is in um, Cote de Basque again in France. I really like those forms. This is a place in Sumatra called eBay, and these are surfers who are staying on land and they're hiking to go surfing. I was on a yacht looking at <laughs> So uh, oh gosh, this is kind of yin and yang, tropical to Iceland. This is a friend of mine, Donovan Frankenreiter. He's actually a, a singer, famous singer now. And, uh, we went to Iceland, and I said, paddle out into this glacial area. And so he did, and he, he went in there and was doing that. And right then, he, when I took the shot, he screamed at me, hurry up, fucking my head's freezing, hurry up, man. <laughs> So another aspect is the surfing culture are these characters that you come across like you would in any kind of sport, but they're a little more uh, Creedler types, I guess. <laughs> so this is Al Chapman. He literally, I saw his car. He pulled up in this car. I went, oh, Al, I got your photo. And he said, okay, man. And he's like holding that poster, which was for a surf movie, going, this is me, man. Fluid drive, fluid drive. And he's He's like going on, and I just love his trunk sets of Primo, is a Hawaiian beer company. And uh, when I looked inside, uh, the whole front floor was full of just garbage and fast food stuff. He's a, he's a renowned, he's one of the last of the living characters in, in the surfing world. This is another guy, uh, another character, I think it might be one of the Runmans. They're from Kauai, actually from LA. But so there's a lot of guys that are smiley, stoned, giggly. This really, this was in the 70s. This reminds me of all my friends so much. Just who knows what they're laughing at. But some guys are grumpy. <laughs> some guys are just kind of super eccentric. And uh, this is a friend of mine in Santa Barbara, James O. Mahoney. He has the greatest eccentric museum near the base of the pier in Santa Barbara. And I think he looks like Truman Capote. <laughs> he has a museum. And uh, I said, I gotta get a shot of you. And he brings out his ukulele and kind of dresses up. And then he goes, What about this? And puts that's a 357 Magnum in his, uh, in his pants there. <laughs> that's a subtlety. This is a guy, a boat captain in Indonesia, where Indonesia is some of the finest surf. And he has it his own coffee plantation on in the off season. So he, he sells you coffee from, in, from Sumatra. This is kind of just a nice portrait I have of a Floridian surfer on Maui. He was looking out at the surf, kind of just gazing out and kind of pensive, but kind of a kind of a typical thing. Their boards are all piled in the back. This is Joel Tudor, he's a world champion longboarder, like legendary longboarder. He got into jiu-jitsu and was a world champion in jiu-jitsu also. He's another real character. This is a friend of mine, Carl Ekstrom, who's an inventor and an architect, and uh, he stylized shoes and things for the military helmets, and he helped with this wave pool uh, that was developed by uh, Tom Lochtefeld. And they're on princess cruises and all that. It put, it's a system where it pushes water out into waveforms. There's, they're all over the place. This is Reynolds Jader. He's, he's about 80 years old. And he's this very famous craftsman board shaper. This is his house in, in, on the East Cape of Cabo San Lucas in Baja. And he always likes to point out that that's his wife's cactus garden on the far left. And how beautiful it is. They're proud of that. So another thing to all surfers is the perfect wave. 
And when you're really a young surfer, you draw it on your notebooks at school. And, but it doesn't happen where it's really perfect very often. So this is an example of perfect waves and what they are in there. They're it, usually at reef breaks. This is in Indonesia off Sumatra. It's a place called The Hole. And uh, waves are long interval, which means they're 20 seconds, which makes them a little bit bigger. You can have a small swell. If it's a longer interval, it makes them bigger. The, there's light wind. You can, that's called being glassy in the foreground. It's all calm. There's minimal wind. And it's peeling out down off a, a reef in a perfect symmetry, I guess you could say. This is Pat Godoskis uh, at the hole. And as, as they're riding, there was probably about six or seven guys out. And when guys are paddling out in the foreground, they're screaming at their buddies when they're on waves like that. It's really fun. This is an ex another example of a perfect day. This is in Sumatra, a spot called Lance's Rides. <clears throat> These are things that surfers only see. So growing up, uh, I'd come in to grandma's and she had my She'd say, well, there's cookies on the table. I was spoiled. And anyway, <laughs> Grandma, the whole ocean went golden. And so these things happen to you as a surfer, and you try to explain it to somebody who doesn't surf. They go, uh -huh, you know, really? And so this is an area in Indonesia, and it can go golden for like 15 seconds or 10 minutes. And it's so beautiful when it does that. The whole, the whole ocean lights up. This is another example of things only a surfer sees, which is wildlife, where dolphins come right by you and go around you or right past you. And sometimes they, they come back and they'll, they'll be on a wave, kind of surfing a wave coming at you. It's, it's like the neatest experience. And you always think they're going to ram you or something. They just go right by you. They're, this is something that when you're paddling out, you see waves like this, and it's so hard to explain because it's so beautiful, but it's happening in milliseconds. But you know, you see that, and it's just so hard to explain to somebody. There's another example of your friends in the tube, and the waves thick, and you know, it doesn't really quite explain it. That photo, even you know, what, it's, what it's really like. This is another thing that you see. Is this is backwash where a a prior wave will go up into the shoreline, hit a berm, and go. the energy will go back out and hit another wave. And this is a friend of mine at Makaha, which is known for backwash. And it hit the wave and made this molten glass effect, which you, that's like 1 500th of a second and it's gone. But when you see that as a surfer and you try to describe it, you go home and describe it. They think, yeah, OK, well, we understand. <laughs> Uh, this is another really neat thing, as I sh uh, said before, you can, anywhere you go, you can go underwater with a mask and a snorkel and dive under the waves and watch surfers go by or just watch the waves and it's so beautiful. This is an example of the pelicans kind of coming straight at you and then they, they, they tear up, they go right above you as they go by, big huge pelicans, that's a really neat experience. This is another thing that's hard to describe where it's so hard offshore, how it can look kind of uh, like jewelry or diamondy or something that gets really, uh, really beautiful when the wind's strong. It's hard to surf though. There's another one of the moon going down. This is Jeffreys Bay in South Africa. It's actually natural lighting. I used to go there a lot in the late 70s. This is another thing is where it's hard to explain to people. It's called spit, where the the wave is so hollow um, that the whitewater part of the portion of the wave um, gets spit out by the energy of the, I don't know how, actually I don't know the science of it, I should, but it's a phenomenon that happens in strips called getting spit out. This is just one of my favorite shots, I took it in Tahiti, I was sitting on a, a little ponga in the channel, it's kind of terrifying actually. But I just love how it looks like glass and he's pushing through. These are examples of how my work's been used in a commercial way. <laughs> yes, I sold out a long time ago. <laughs> um, 
And so all of this was so flattering to me because I did what I did uh, for so long and then it started getting used in, in commercial ways which were really, you know, the money is one thing but it's just flattering. This is a Jan and Dean album cover. I hung out with Jan and Dean and Dennis Wilson and, uh, and I got an album cover. That's a shot in Honolulu. Uh, this is flattering for me. Uh, the Herbie Hancock album cover, he, they used the wave. That's why I made a short break on one of his albums. This is a, a recent, kind of more recent Eddie Vedder, or Pearl Jam single vinyl they put out to their fan club, which is really fun to have that. That's Bugs Kaluuya on it, Kaluuya Kalani. This is a long time ago. That's a Coke ad, obviously, but that's very kind of pretty. Uh, this is a cover of Surfer I got, in, and the story behind it is I'm standing with all the other surf photographers in there. We're all, we all rag on each other and make fun of each other, and there's probably about six guys standing behind me, and they're razzing me like, you know, divine, because the clouds came over. Divine, it's going to rain. What are you doing? Dark, but, yeah, you know. And then as soon as they said that, I went. Kelly Slater, who's on the cover, here, went. I went. Bah, 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 and I got the sequence. <laughs> I gave him my best, you know, Bart Simpson. <laughs> you know, they got all mad at me. <laughs> then uh, it was on. It's made the cover of Surfer. So. <laughs> this is a uh, one time I built a fancy house in San Clemente up on the hill and uh, I did hardwood floors and I owed the contractor about three grand and I didn't have the money and I went, oh no, oh no, and he's kind of showing up. He wasn't getting too irate, but uh, I walk in on a Sunday, the money's due on a Monday or a Tuesday and I see this uh, wrapped in the LA Times, you know how they wrap the funny papers on the outside and I go, that's my wave. Turns out I had licensed this wave to Hallmark Cards Hallmark owned peanuts, and all their alarms went off, and they called me on, I called them on Monday, on Tuesday, Charles Schultz called me, of all people, and I was so, it was so neat to talk to him, and he apologized, because I could have gone for the throat and gotten quite a bit of money, and I said, don't worry, I'm just going to charge you what's normal, which was three grand, <laughs> and uh, he, I got in this big, long conversation, and I told him that, um, Hey, uh, Bart Simpson said stoked in Cowabunga, and he goes, no, he didn't. Uh, Pina said stoked in Cowabunga way before Bart Simpson. He got this big defensive thing about how uh, uh, Pina said it before Bart. It's <laughs> 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 another like odd thing of how my work was used. This is a, a dance magazine, and I, I have no idea who that guy is, but he's probably from New York, and he's probably a famous dancer. He's riffing. Um, this at the time, you know, my my work would get used. This is Continental Airlines, which I don't think exists anymore, and it was this is in transit, like in bus stations and um, airports and all that, which was kind of flattering, kind of pretty good money. This is a, uh, <laughs> once these uh, art directors in San Francisco called me, they go, do you have any surfos we could look at? Um, we're doing a poster for the Pope's visit to San Francisco. I go, yeah, and I said, I had no idea what they were talking about. And, uh, and that's it, I, I, I love it. It's like mocking Somebody saw this and said that her, Parents were Catholic and they were so into the Pope's visit that they got a sprinkler head that had the Pope at the center <laughs> But anyway, that's a, that's a pretty uh, funny one. Uh, another thing about surfing, a bigger thing, is how you hold your hands. And some of it comes from, uh, believe it or not, bullfighting, where surfers used to go to Tijuana and drink wine and in kind of a yeah. rowdier era of uh, the 60s, and they would they would kind of mimic some of the bullfighting poses and, uh, as a style. It has it has to do with your body language, you know, how you hold your hands. So these are all kind of examples of good style. It's kind of a low body language type style. This is Honolulu Bay on Maui. That's just kind of a uh, the Australians would call that a what is it? F O 
BT, which means fuck off, bottom turn. <laughs> That's their slang for that. This is Mark Richards, a kind of extreme body language and style, and he, to this day, he, he surfed so many years like that, it, it hurt his back, and he has a really bad uh, back. This is kind of modern, modernist style. He's dragging his arms. This is Matt Archibald. These are a few of my favorites and some of my more famous photos. I used to live in a house on, on that pipeline, a little single, single room house. It was just awesome. My friend had gone on the road with, of all things, Captain and Tennille. He was the roadie for them. And he goes, do I, you want to rent my house? I go, oh, yeah. And it was right for the pipe. One day I, I looked out and saw this full arc rainbow. Ran, got my camera, put one roll of 36 shots, ran down and took 36 shots, and this was the only one where all the things came together. This is one of my favorite photos because it's one of the f my first water shot times. And this is at Wind and Sea in La Jolla. This is a film by Tom Ortner. And it's really difficult to follow focus with a 135 lens in a water house, and this one came out really sharp and nice. So I that's really like that one. This is a, another one I love. This is it's an island off Ensenada. And I was on my boogie board. A tray, my raft evolved into a boogie board. And this is a giant wave. And, it, and, it, it, and I got clipped by it. And I got flipped and, and kind of tossed into the shore. Not, it wasn't too bad. But the white water on the face of that wave means that this actual wave is smaller than the one prior to it. This is a, one of my favorite shots of a body surfer and a, his body language. And it's like uh, my friend Mark Cunningham, who's a famous body surfer, said that this photo is like he's doing a one-handed push-up. Like it's really hard to body surf that way. This guy's name was Red Wings. Uh, he was a real character. He ended up dying, but he was uh, one of those fabric of our sport character type guys. This is another favorite shot of mine. This is Ralph's son. She's a Hawaiian surfer from Waianae, Makahai. She integrated kind of feminine style into women surfing because a lot of the women surfing was kind of mimicking the guys, kind of radical, muscular, all this stuff. And so Rel with some other women surfers came up with this kind of feminine smooth style that's just gorgeous to watch. And the modern day version of that is a girl named Steph Gilmore, who's a multiple world champion. If you ever, you can go online and watch film clips of her. She's incredible. This is another very famous shot of mine by uh, Buttons Kaluhio Kalani. And he, the reason he's doing a peace sign is he dropped in on a guy just prior. And he's like a real chatterbox, Buttons, and everybody's, he was very, well-known Hawaiian, and the guy further behind is just going, fuck out and kick your ass, blah, 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 and he's going, peace, bro, peace. <laughs> <laughs> Calm the guy down, basically. This is another great shot of Lisa Anderson. She's a multiple world champion. Uh, she helped develop the, the surf trunks she's wearing are the early on versions of Roxy's women's surf trunks which really changed everything, which developed into Roxy women's uh, athletic wear and clothing. She's, uh, she was what I was describing about being smooth and all that. She was incredible. Still is, actually. So this is a little bit of early on. This is about 71. And this is uh, in California near Nixon's house at Trestles in San Clemente. This is, I'm trying to give you the feel of California kind of early on, you know, pre-freeway and all that, and then all of a sudden the pot, the freeways went in, and, and actually in 64, but the population just kept growing and growing and growing in California. To all of us that grew up there, it was kind of like, what's going on? You know, like, what? And it was because of the, the aircraft industry and, you know, all kinds of reasons people were coming to California. And, uh, in our world, you know, my friends, we'd be at the beach, and I distinctly remember, and they'd be saying, can you believe all the Texans that are up in North County, San Diego? Oh, my God, what are these guys doing here? And, and all these people were immigrating to uh, 
California or Southern California in particular, and it made the surf more crowded and made everybody cranky and there'd be graffiti um, in a lot of surf spots, which was trying to intimidate you from uh, uh, hanging out. <laughs> I, I remember this was we were young, naive, and we pulled up and we saw that. And this is in Ventura, at California Street. And there's literally Hell's Angels bikers and construction guys. And, we, and the surf was really good. And we saw this signage and we go, whoop, okay, moving right along. And we left. This is Sunset Cliffs on um, San Diego. You have to unlocal. This is, uh, <laughs> That's the pump house, and Tom Wolf wrote the pump house game. So the surfers are trying to rag on Tom. This is a guy who, it's kind of self explanatory, was, this is at a contest in Santa Cruz, and the guy was sitting in his car, and uh, I almost went up to talk to him, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, as surfers in the 70s, we were influenced by the hippie movement, but we weren't hippies. The hippies were more politicized than we were. We had long hair and had all that look, and we got harassed a lot in La Jolla by when Herbert Marcuse or Angela Davis would give a talk, they'd come and harass us and, and couldn't understand. But anyway, the, the hippie movement had an influence on the arts, therefore the arts, the art that went on your surfboard, Actually, the things that we wore were more conservative. Um, this is an example of psychedelic artwork on the boards. This is a Laguna Beach. The hippies lived in Encinitas and Acadia. Yeah. You lived in La Jolla where everybody was. <laughs> yeah. Right. And uh, so this is another example of kind of uh, psychedelic artwork. This is, a, this is an Australian, Terry Fitzgerald, who. He brought the first stylized quiver, that's called a quiver of boards, which, to Hawaii. And he had every one of those boards in a sheath, like a gray sheath, and he un took them all out like they were bows and arrows and like these finely crafted. Uh, the second one from the left is called a screwdriver, which I don't know how that thing worked. <laughs> <laughs> so as I was saying about the hippie thing and all that, is in the surfing world, we're actually pretty conservative. We weren't. Some of that psychedelia stuff we weren't really into, at least my group. This is an example of how we were unbranded, and the things that we wore weren't given to us when the Garmento world ramped up in the 80s. All this stuff was given to us. This is a classic example of the 80s, fluoro and all that. But in the 70s, we were um, unbranded in the sense of you might have puka shells on, but you found the puka shells. Or you might have a bag you got at Oaxaca. Or you might have an amulet on your wrist from Bali, you know, a silversmith in Bali. Or it was all kind of original stuff. Or you might, uh, where I grew up, you could get hippie girls would come and measure you and make me, they made me custom shirts. I got a couple of them with little embroidery down the front and coconut buttons and kind of a, uh, it was really, really neat, and it wasn't until the surfing and lifestyle industry really fired up in the mid '80s that it, that we it became like that. <laughs> <laughs> Glasses, fanny pack, neon, uh, you know, like in the '70s, we didn't have backpacks, glasses, sandals, any of that stuff. Like we'd have a, a we carry stuff in a bag from Oaxaca or something. And this is an example, you know, typical 70s, uh, you know, unbranded, uh, that's probably a borrowed board, um, Aloha shirt. This guy actually, a backstory, he, he was the, I never knew this, but he was the head of the Hare Krishna movement, I think, in the islands, and he had a diamond in there, one of his teeth. So there's, there's kind of yin and yang there, that's, what, the way I go back. that's that. And then there's fully commercialized, you know, he's making money off those logos. And if he got a, this is Richie Collins, he's from Huntington Beach, California. If he got a photo in a magazine on the cover, especially they got paid out really good money for all the logos or a full page in the interior. This is 
typical kind of that punk rock artwork that kind of there was kind of the hippie era artwork, the psychedelia stuff or, or more conservative stuff in the hippie era, and then it became punk rock influenced the, just the artwork on the surfboards, the music did. This is an example of the unbranded, you know, there's no logo, no nothing, like kind of pure. And you can, this is in 74 at Hawaii, you can see how minimal people are on the beach, whereas now that, that whole beach would be packed with photographers and videographers and all that. Versus, this is the branded look in the 80s. This is the, uh, where the crowd goes wild over horrible wipeouts. <laughs> This is an image that I found recently in my archive, and I just love the kind of starkness of it. And the, like you can shoot and shoot and shoot, and it's hard to wipeouts are kind of easy to get, but it's hard to get one that's unusual. I like just kind of the graphic nature of the board, just flying. It shows the power, and probably that board got snapped. In those days, a uh, board was a big deal. If it got snapped, you know, it was about 300 bucks. The boards are now about six or 800 bucks, especially if you had borrowed the board. This is the worst kind of wipeout to a male. <laughs> really. Then that's how you protect yourself. <laughs> This is a famous surfer, Jerry Lopez, who at this spot, he was considered the king of the spot. Uh, and he came back years later and he would surf in these competitions as kind of the legend. And he told me that this wave finally told him that he was too old to surf this spot anymore. Got a horrible one. Like and the reef, the reef there is really shallow. It's probably about four or five feet deep. This is off that same island in Baja, and this is kind of now you see them, now you don't. Know. <laughs> this is a Santa Cruz guy, Barney uh, Barron, and he was a character. He, he had this, that's kind of one of the worst wipeouts you can have where you fall all the way from the top to the bottom. And he came in, and we were all worried about him. Are you okay? And he goes, yeah, I'm okay. And he just got another board and went out, and within three minutes did the whole thing again. He <laughs> came in, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. And he went out again and did it again, believe it or not. This is a sequence of a friend of mine in Makaha. And that's, he's on my boogie board. And I saw this backwash action going on. I go, Curtis, you should go out there on my boogie board and catch one of those. So he went out and got washed. The lower left is dry sand. <laughs> Okay, he's a park ranger. <laughs> this is a friend of mine in San Clemente at a contest. He was shooting photos, and his, I guess in a boat you have a, a safety thing on the car keys or the boat keys that can that come pull the keys out of the ignition as a safety precaution. And he had pulled the key out without knowing it, and then a wave came. <laughs> there was a photographer in the front who lost a bunch of camera bodies. This is my favorite. There's a, this is in Newport Beach, California, and there's a, a whole uh, history of these guys body surfing out there at the Wedge in Newport. It's a famous radical wave. And they're, lit, they're the funniest group of guys that are doctors, lawyers, firemen, you know, and finance, etc., etc. And that big wild parties and this and that. So this is just them at the beach going, hey, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the wedge heads at play. And that's the end of the show. Yeah. Any, questions? Any questions? Okay. Um, thank you. <laughs> yep, I just retired from photo editing uh, at the Surface Journal.
and I photo edited for 35 years, 17 at Surfer Magazine and 18 at Surfer Journal, so I'm really excited to be life changing. Uh, I've just been at that school for long enough, you know, there was no bad news, so I went out on a good, good vibe, and uh, you know, uh, what do they say now? Is sitting is the new smoking? And I, I started thinking about that too. I, I literally sat at a computer all day long doing work. A guy named uh, my helper that I had for the last couple of years named Sean Parker. He's great. Yeah. Yes? Any uh, up and coming sort of photographers, young guys that you really like? Yeah, there's a. Uh, I was talking about this the other day. In photography, you, you can follow, you can kind of be, can I see this? There's like, there's guys who have a vision and create things that are unusual than, than all this big masses being created. Like, it's really easy to sit in, a, in the channel and see and go boom, 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 here comes another boom. But there's other guys who can go into that same uh, arena and come up with things that are random and way up sideways from the typical. One of the, my favorite example is like Morgan Masson. There's a guy named Will Adler, um, Dane Peterson, and that's all I can think of right now. Or something like this. But you can see their work and you can see what I'm talking about. Any questions? Okay. Oh, yes. Do you consider putting photos together a collection of your, um, it was really interesting you were referring to the unbranded. Are you going to do a book or something? Well, the book downstairs is pretty much that whole year of the 70s. Okay, yeah. so. But then the, the other book downstairs in the 80s is what Basically, they just started flowing <laughs> right. free stuff in every circuit of this going, yeah, I'll take $1,000 worth of free clothes. So, but those were, they were the trendsetters, so that's why they're, it's the same thing today. There's a name for that, but people who are, Surf stars. <laughs> okay, well, I guess that's about it. Thank you.